click the bell icon and subscribe to our channel so that you will not miss any classes hello welcome to class in this class let us discuss the process of recombinant dna technology process of recombinant dna technology till now we have discussed in detail the tools of recombinant dna technology in detail so now let us discuss step by step how the process will be conducted okay the first step in the recombinant dna technology is the isolation of isolation of gene of interest interest or we can call it as genomic dna it is which d which gene we want to insert into other organism that gene should be isolated from a source organism okay isolation of gene of interest from source organism source could be anything it could be animal cell it could be plant cell or fungal or bacterial okay any any cell is a source so here the from the source organism the dna should be isolated for this isolation definite the steps are follow where firstly depending upon the type of cell we are using we know that every cell will not have the dna which is exposed so it will be well protected in nucleus as in case of eukaryotes and it will be protected by the plasma membrane and by the cell wall okay so in order to extract that dna out we need to remove these content cell wall should be removed plasma membrane should be removed then inside the cell there are contents uh, the macro molecules like proteins lipids then uh, other uh, nucleotides like uh, rna they are all present they should be removed and we want the dna in a pure form so for that what they will do is firstly the source cell will be treated with a definite enzymes to remove the cell wall for example if we are using a plant cell if we are using a plant cell then the plant cell should be treated with the enzyme cellulase so it will remove the cell wall then if we are using a bacterial cell bacterial cell then it should be treated with lysozyme enzyme then if we are using back sorry fungal then it should be treated with chitinase if we are using a animal cell so animal cells will not have a cell wall so here the cell will not be treated with enzyme here to remove the plasma membrane they make use of a detergent detergent sodium dode si sulfate sodium dode si sulfate will be added to remove the plasma membrane so now after treating these uh, with the respective enzymes the cell wall and the plasma membrane will be sorry the cell wall will be removed and we will obtain it in the form of protoplast protoplast means the cell without cell wall okay and so in a mixture we will have a cell without the cell wall so here is the cell without cell wall but no doubt there is a, there is no cell wall but there are macro molecules the macro molecules are present the macro molecules like proteins lipids 
carbohydrates, then RNA, they are all being present. To remove them, we want to remove that and we want the DNA in the few form. So for that, proteins will be removed by the action of proteases. So proteases will be added. Then to remove the lipids, lipases. And to remove RNA, RNAases will be added. So when we add this, the respective macromolecules will be degraded. Only the remaining thing will be the DNA. Okay. And that DNA will be present in the solution form. So now it is not visible. To make it visible, to undergo precipitation to this solution, then add chilled ethanol. Ethanol or ethyl alcohol will be added. When chilled ethanol or alcohol is added, then the DNA undergoes DNA undergoes precipitation. So after precipitation, the DNA will be uh, visible here in the thread forms. Okay. After when the DNA undergo precipitation, the DNA is visible in fine threads. Okay. So this fine threads will be taken out. The fine threads of DNA can be taken out by spooling. That is by using some spatula, we can take it. The, the take the precipitated DNA easily out and that process is called spooling. That is spooling is, it is the taking of precipitated DNA from a solution using spatula or some needle. Okay, that is called precipitation. So after taking the DNA, we got the DNA, genomic DNA and from that gene of interest should be isolated. And for that isolation, this DNA will be treated with the restriction endonucleases. That is the second step. So, till now we have discussed the first step in recombinant DNA technology that is isolation of gene of interest. And this we have not discussed in detail previously. But the other things which are discussing now, we have discussed them in detail. Just I will give a uh, number now. Okay, the steps so that it will be easier for you to remember. <laughs> now, after isolating uh, the gene of interest, that gene of sorry, the DNA, the DNA should be cut into the fragments that is. Restriction digestion. That is fragmentation of DNA by treating it with a restriction endonucleases. Then the third step is after restriction digestion, we will obtain a pool of fragments. From that pool of fragments, we have to obtain gene of our interest, and that is made possible by gel electrophoresis. That is Isolation and separation of separation of gene of interest gene of interest by gel electrophoresis. So after gel electrophoresis the gene of interest will be obtained and that gene of interest should be transferred or it should be cloned into a vector. Then the fourth step is attachment or we can say cloning. Cloning of gene into suitable vector. Suitable vector. So then this vector is called the recombinant DNA 
Now that recombinant DNA should be transformed into host. Transformation. The fifth step is transformation of recombinant DNA into host. So the methods available we have discussed already. Either by the simple transformation technique or uh, preparing a competent host or by uh, the methods like micro propagate, sorry, uh, micro injection, electrophoresis, gene derm. So, many of these methods by using this, we can transfer the uh, recombinant DNA into host. Then, after transferring the recombinant DNA into host, that host should be grown in a large amount. So, that is possible by growing that host cell in a large containers called bioreactors. Growing of growing of the host cells or we can call them as etylologous host. So the host which is having a foreign DNA is called etylologous host. Growing the etylologous host host in Bioreactors, bioreactors, so that we can uh, produce the product in large amount. Product can be obtained in large amount or biomass that can be obtained in large amount. So that is the sixth step. So then after producing a product in a large scale, that product will be with the impurities. Okay, so to get a fine product, that product should be under or uh, should be undergone through the series of purification techniques and those purification techniques will be collectively called downstream processing downstream processing downstream processing means it is isolation and purification purification of product which is produced in the bioreactors. Okay, so this we have to discuss that is bioreactors, the types of bioreactors that we shall discuss in the next class. So till here we have discussed in detail from the first step, isolation of gene of interest from the source organism, then treating it with the restriction enzymes. We have discussed uh, what are the types of restriction enzyme and how it will cut the DNA, all the things we have discussed. Then after its restriction digestion, the from the fragments, we need to isolate gene of our interest by electrophoresis. And that uh, gene of interest which is obtained should be cloned into the suitable vector. Then that vector should be transferred into the host by any of the available methods. Then that host, heterologous host, that host is called heterologous host and that heterologous host is made to grow in large amount in a container called bioreactors. Then in the bioreactor we obtain a product on a large scale but it has the impurities and those impurities will be subjected to downstream processing where isolation and purification of the product will be done. Okay. So now one thing is remained here, we need to study the bioreactor structure that we shall discuss in the next class.